all right hi everyone um so uh, first of all i'll go with my introductions uh, my name is ravi and i will be taking out this demo sessions and the upcoming uh, you know app and training um so i have around 9 years of experience in app and development and uh, yeah, i have worked on like you know uh, healthcare domain finance domain uh, for our app and projects okay so i i welcome you all for your these app and demo sessions and um, you know um any questions if you have before we start please let me know okay all right so i'll uh, this is a request that you know uh, please be on mute during the session and then you know if you have any questions either you ping me or uh, you know on in the chat window and we can at the end we can go with the question and answer sessions okay all right All right, I see a few new members have joined. Hey, everyone, uh, who has joined a um, few minutes back? Can you guys hear me okay? Anyone has any issue with the audios? Thank you. All right. If anyone has any audio issues, please do let me know. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, again, uh, welcome. Yeah. Hi, Shadow. All right, let me quickly share my screen for presentation. Can see one screen, anyone? Any issues? All right. No, so we are able to see. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the conversation. So, hi all. I uh, will come for the Appian demonstrations. So, here we will be talking about the the Appian, what Appian is, <coughs> and uh, you know, um, what's the current market position, and then uh, you know what do you learn here in these training sessions, and then you know uh, once you complete your training, uh, what positions you are capable of you know working as a developer or tester or what is the things. So, so we will be seeing all this demo about the appian i know and um, at the end we will have a question and answer sessions so before we start if you guys have anything in your mind uh, uh you know you, you can ask me okay all right so so appian so let me ask you one question um what is bpm anyone And I'll request everyone, you know, please be interactive as much as questions you will ask. Uh, you know, it will be more clarify. I will be able to clarify more of your doubts. So, yeah. Anyone can answer that? What is a BPM? Uh, APM is a local development uh, platform, like where we can uh, like use low code and develop the. Uh, like uh, more number of code into a uh, low code. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. It's fine. Yes, I do. I see. that you say that it's to create an application. All right. So let me first let me you know make you understand that what the BPM is. BPM is a concept. You know, um, like which is used to develop an application. 
so you know we have bp the full form is called business process management okay so when we talk about the bpm uh, it says business process management let me so when you say business process management there are three terms business process and management right so what do you understand by business anyone any idea what's a business okay so business you know you can consider as a kind of a requirement you now whenever you get a requirement that's called a business if i ask you can you please uh, uh, make a cup of tea right if you uh, if i ask you to make a cup of tea so making a tea is a your business requirement all right now the second comes the process so what is the process making tea that's correct so making tea is nothing but a process right you know i mean so i can say as a you know workflow definition you know or process of making the process tea. of making tea. correct all right then lastly comes management what do you understand by management have you present it um yeah mm -hmm. that could be one of the answers how you can present your tea but you know while making a tea you will be getting sugar from somewhere you will be getting your milk from somewhere your uh, pan from somewhere right and put it at one place and then uh, uh, switch on your stove and all right so all those things are like placed at some places at uh, somewhere right coordination so among kind of those back end data right where you have keep all your things at some place right uh, how you to manage data in terms of i can say manage data it's for example i can mention that you know uh, uh, sugar might be placed somewhere sugar tea um you know pan kept at some place right is that is that clear now what is the business process management bpm yes thank you all right so what is an apn now so first of all business process management is not a technology it's a concept okay many people confuse that you know what it basically is it's basically the concept of developing an application all right now what apn is apn is a it's a bpm tool okay so basically the concept that we have a business process management apn works in that you know as a tool on this concept okay now there might be a question comes to you uh, you know mind you know, you know in your mind like you know how it is a different between uh, you know from the java or dot net and then uh, you know uh, other python and all right so how appian is different with it anyone can guess anything you yes, yes. i mean try and it's low code platform yeah it is low code platform but in concept wise how it is different okay the first point that is correct it's a low code less code sorry less code required to yeah. uh, create yes so that's the low code okay so how basically it's different from the java and dot net right in java and dot net you have to write a lot of code you know i mean for everything for a connection for creating an interface for creating a rule for everything you need, need to write a code but in appian you do not have to write a code for everything yes there it's a low code uh, when i say it's a low code and not uh, as no code there are many tools are available in the market now which says uh, they are a no code but appian is low code okay 
so don't get confused that you know we, uh, that you do not have to write any single line of code in in future you definitely you have to write some line of code to express your business logic to uh, you know uh, do some calculation you know, so, so certain number of codes will be there but definitely you will have a lot of helpful functions and definitions available to your screen that you can easily create your codes okay now if i talk about the concept wise how this appian is different from other java, uh, programming languages so the other programming languages that we have java dot python those are used to create an application as a uh, uh, when i say that you know as a worldwide you know everyone can use that application right for the end users can be anyone in simple terms we can say that end users can be anyone all right however the appian application that we built right appian application builds for the in house application it says that in house application right appian is an let me mention other language are uh, meant for end users and can can be anyone now appian can be for in house application okay let me see the third point so say appian is for in house users so when i say in house users what do you mean by uh, do you understand by uh, what is the in house users so for example we can take a bank okay when a bank is work like let's say for example we are working with the sbi right so the employees of sbi okay employee of any bank they are the in house users right the employees of the uh, you know of that organizations they are the in house users so if you are going to create any application in appian they will not be available for all the users like for example in sbi we have two things right employees and the customers so the application that we will be building in appian those will be for the employees not for the customers okay clear any questions what appian is and how it's different from the other language okay so now you understand what's a bpm and what's an appian all right is that concept should be clear before we go forward all right sir one question shall i move uh, next yeah go ahead uh, yeah yeah so so you said it is in house i mean Appian is for in-house users. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have the example of a bank saying that like mm -hmm. it is for the software for the own bank. So how is it related to Appian? I I didn't understand that part. How it's related to Appian? Like say so for example, uh, you are going to create an application for customer onboarding. Okay. Customer onboarding. Okay. So what do you think? Who is going to work on this application? Um. the company will use it to onboard the customers yeah right so bank employees for example bank employees will be the person who will be the using this application right yeah this application is for the customers but the customer mm. will not be using this one this will be used by the bank employees so for example when you go mm. to the bank and you say that i want to withdraw some amount so are mm. you the person who is sitting behind the screen and 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 working all those process to get that amount Credit amount to your account or uh, debit the account from your account. No, right? Is the bank employee? Mm. So they yeah. are the one who is using your application, mm. right? Yeah. And those applications are built on Appian, not the end users. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, got it. Thanks. Anyone else? Any has any questions? Okay. Okay. Let me move to the presentations. yeah hello yeah go ahead a quick question is a low code but so which uh, language will this code be okay so appian is basically built on java right oh, you know okay. this appian uh, the back end code of this appian environment is built on java right so the code that you will see it's it has its own code coding standard 
but it's not purely java what i can say you know it's it's kind of a, a similar code of java oh, okay because i don't know any programming languages that's why right. just... okay not no worries you know because the appian uh, you know in the coding you know whenever we see you will realize that you know for every function that we are going to use it is going to give you a clear definition of uh, you know all the functions what it is required what needs to be passed you will see that you know slowly and you don't need a basic core language understanding of uh, you know app into it it will be very smooth and uh, you know once you write the code by drag and drop options because appian use and drag and drop right so you will realize that how the code is being generated so appian also gives you the another view of code you know so in okay. appian we have two things design okay. mode and expression mode so in design mode you will be see that how you are designing your interface and everything in expression mode you click on that if you will be see that how the code has been designed in the back end okay and you might have learned in the college and all if you have from the computer background like how do if i ask you um if the value of x is 10 then print hello otherwise print well right so how you write okay. this condition mm -hmm. so it's a very simple right if okay true part and else part so such kind of language will be there okay, okay, okay. sure okay. and for the interfaces it is called shell okay shell is a self assembled interface language okay okay thank you it's a good question for the uh, user at least uh, who who is not from the you know, coding background but yeah don't yeah. need no need to worry because if the coding is not that tough Okay. Okay. Got it. Thanks. All right. All right. Guys, can see my screen? No. I can see two screen now. You guys can see my screen. Nothing. No, no, no it's yeah. not visible. Okay. Okay. Can I see it now? No. No, it's not. Give me a second. Some issues. Um, well, it's shared. My screen is shared. Are you able to see that? I'm presenting the app and uh, not presentation. No, it's no, not. It's very blank. It's blank, it's blank actually. Yes. Okay. Being, but it's blank. Uh huh. Let me. I I can see all the participants. That's it. Okay. Give me a second. How about now? Yeah, it's visible. All right. Okay. So what now? Appian can do, right? You know, like if you are going to learn for the Appian. So what Appian are capable of doing that? We'll see that, and then you know, um, what are the features and how is the market position as of now in the market? So Appian can be automated. You know, it can create some automated process that user don't have to intervene it, and then you know, it will. Perform some actions by itself once you define the time. It is very faster as compared to the other, uh, you know, basic programming languages like Java, .NET, and Python. That, that will require a lot of, uh, uh, you know, courage and time to create an application. But in Appian, you can quickly create and like a fully fledged working application you can create in in a week. And it's a low code, so you don't have to be very much in the coding standards. You know, you will be able to do that. uh the creating the application process and very easy and adopt that coding standards so we talk about the bpm and right bpm and appian uh, so bpm is a business process management where we you know uh 
take the requirement from the users and then we process the data and then we finally manage the data from where we have to bring the info information and from where we have to keep that information and appian is the kind of a concept was on that same concept it's a bpm tool and uh, you know these are the agenda we'll talk about like what's the marketing positions of the appian it's a low code and where appian fits how do we process the data and then you know, what are the objects and components we will be using into this appian development and uh, what is the architecture showcase of appian how it looks and you know uh, if you have some time so you can also go work through some of the appian beta application and then we'll go for the question and answers so bpm the business process model you know uh we see bpmn it's a business process model and notations so it's a basically a diagram if you see the diagram you will realize that you know uh, the example that i've given to you for making a tea uh, here is an example of like you know online shopping where a customer can place an order once a customer can place an order the order will get inserted into the system and then from there it has to process like someone will pick it up and then you know they'll say okay this i have received we have received this order we have to you know um make some payment options we'll we'll give them a page okay you have order selected this op option i mean item to buy and then you know it's in your cart please proceed to the buy once you click on proceed to buy then you will be making a payment and then once the payment will be get received then you will be your item will be dispatched so that's what is behind the everything is happening is it's a workflow that is working right now who is working behind the scene like you know once you are submitting you are making a payment who is the responsible user or person or the system who is taking your details from from you and then processing to the system and then you know notifying to the uh, i mean business users like you know okay this has been received and all right so there is a process behind it so and if i talk about the real time example like making a tea right so you know uh, once i ask you to prepare a tea you will try to you know first collect the information okay what are the uh, you know required materials we we need to prepare a tea you will search for a milk you will search for a sugar you will search for a liquor and you know you, once you will bring all those information then you will put it on the pan and then you will light on the stove so there is a process you cannot just simply go and uh, switch on your stove and then start searching for the things right so there is a process behind it see if you switch on the stove and then search for things this time the tea will still be, be created right but the what will happen it will it will not be optimized so the, any application it's not about the bpm application language or uh, java or anything right any programming language any any concept of in your life as well right if you want to do such perform certain kind of work you need to understand that how optimally you can do that right so ev for everything you whatever you do in your regular life or in the programming it's a, it's a process right so how you process the data how you follow the routine to get it done in very efficient manner right? so that's why you can see the process is behind the every workflow so when we see the workflow it's nothing but the flow of design uh, of design of the workflow that you know how your data you want to proceed like suppose if i if you submit the form right and if i submit the form by clicking the cancel button it should not write the data to the data beside it should cancel your workflow so how you design your workflow by using gateways where it should go everything is uh, you know you can do in the app also and that concept is called process modeling in app basically we have a process model which will define your workflow okay so you know how you want to process your data which path it has to take to you know do all those jobs all right is that clear so we yeah. talk about the app uh, yeah any questions so we talk about the app and you know it, it's a bpm tool and uh, which is used to create an in-house applications like you know customer onboarding uh, doing the kyc of a user uh, transferring the amount uh, if you talk about these are the financial terms if, uh, you know analyzing any risk if you are taking any loan then what's the risk behind it what's your uh, how much data you want to proceed does it require any approval or not you know all those things are there into the financial domain if you talk about the healthcare domain into the pharmaceutical companies they are you know during the covid they have used this appian tool as a you know their primary uh, tool for de developing all their applications 
so that's that was the one of the reason that during the covid uh there was no job openings for any other language but again they've had a lot of opportunities so people many people have switched during the covid even myself i switched during the covid and you know uh, could uh, get some good opportunity to learn about the pharmaceuticals for you know, projects so what kind of projects they work in the pharmaceutical let's say for example uh, some uh, there's a I mean, there are many companies right who are creating the drugs so it's creating a drugs or the creating the covid injection was not that easy right and it cannot be like simply get created and you know uh, uh, sell to the market right it's not possible so it has to be go under many trials first they will trial on the uh, animals then they will try on to the bigger animals and then they will try to the humans and there will be multiple terms right and multiple iteration of doing, doing all those uh, uh testing so there's a process behind it right so for all those this kind of app, uh, you know process they have designed a application in appian so you know you can say the clinical trials application you know how the clinical trials works those kind of application also works into the appian um the appian process modeling is really so you know a design in a such a way that it's very easy to pick and you know it's very easy to learn and many things are only the con based on the configuration you don't have to write a code for it like for example if you want to write the data to the database don't have to write so many codes you just have to select which entity you have to write and what data you have to write and then everything is done no connection strings nothing you have to do for your database uh, db write okay appian has also introduced you know the process mining uh, terminology where you know uh, appian will be able to find the bottleneck of your applications like suppose if you have created uh, such applications which is running very slow so appian process mining concept will find that bottleneck where it is causing some issues where it is having some you know a uh, huge data why it's big, being slow so that process mining terminology will able to let you know that you know this there is a process which is um you know causing an issue for the slowness so, but that's a future terminology like in future terms first of all we need to learn how to clear that process then we can see how i mean you know in the uh, higher trainings you will learn that how you do the process mining any questions guys okay these are the some uh, screens uh, you can see on the ui and uh, on my screen uh, that you know you don't have to the, the the good thing is that you don't have to write different codes for different screen you know you just have to design your code and that will be get fitted on any of the devices either you are using laptop screens desktop tabs or uh, you know mobile screens as well so it's very easy to configure all those screens uh, you know patterns so how you want to fit it these are some uis and there are many other tools also into the market you know uh, which work on the bpm uh, concept but appian is one of them uh, who is leading the market for bpm concept because it is enhancing every year and like you know every year it will be released its four uh, four versions like you know for quarter wise and appian has also con you know uh, concentrated on you know ui patterns they are creating such a nice ui they are allowing you to create some nice ui design that will not give you uh, the uh, you know make you realize that you are not working on a tool you will feel that you are working on a web browser and kind of application like you are working on java.net so that's how the appian is enhancing it's definitely it's very faster uh, as compared to other languages it's very faster you will see that in the next few slides that uh, what is the feedback of the other companies this one. so this is how these appian screens look like you know if you have uh, more interest on the creating a ui design and you're good at the ui's uh, thinking process like you know how you can well design the ui you will be able to create nice uis okay any questions Okay, so here you can see that uh, there are some feedbacks from the companies like Ethiopia, Bayer, and Sanofi. These are the uh, giant companies uh, for uh, healthcare domain and then financial. 
So, the, so for QA, you can see they are saying that, you know, um, there were 12 months of clinical trials startup time. So that is was reduced to 1.5 months. The reporting that was, they were doing for the clinical trials were taking a lot of time to process the data from one place to other place. Now, from 12 months, it has been reduced to the 1.5 months. That's how you know quickly I can build the application to process the data and then you know uh, do some automation and then do the work off time when the users are not available. Same for the bear. They said reporting time from hours to minutes. You know, uh, to create a report is very important to the financial companies. So, you know, Appian is very quick to create and design the reports, and then you know you will be able to download all your reports to your system in Excel format. And uh, Appian is uh, you know one of the suggested tools by the bigger giants that you know these are very fast. Same for the Sinopi. Uh, Sinopi is also saying that you know the time is reduced from six days to five seconds because it's reporting such such. All right. So Appian definitely is leading the market. There are a lot of offerings in Appian. Um, also, Appian is now you know uh, taking over the many other projects which was designed in uh, previous uh, BPM tools. Like for example, one of the example is Pega. Uh, you know, many companies are now switching back from Pega to Appian. So uh, those that kind of requirements we have in Appian and and the companies that is you know that has accepted appian as a their primary tool uh, their numbers are very high if you think about the name of a company uh, who is in the financial uh, domain and they will be definitely using appian projects so why because it's a process automation it's also a low code and it also helps you the case management system so that's why the appian is a uh, very demandable into the market Yeah, I mean, Mark, if you talk about it, it's definitely leading the market. Um, uh, it's definitely not older than Pega because uh, you know, all well established company and well established tool. But Appian is, you know, growing very fast. The fast thing, you know, growing rate is very high of this Appian. All right, where Appian fits, you know, uh, so it's not like you know, if you are going to create an Appian application, you will be creating the Appian applications within the, uh, everything is done within the Appian. You can also integrate third party things within the Appian. And also you can expose your Appian things to the third party. So the communication between a different application to Appian and Appian to the different application is very easy. Earlier days, I mean, it was very difficult to create some connections and all, right? But now it's very easy. Uh, they have given you, the objects where you can easily connect the app and applications with any third party applications. You can extend your current system with the new process. Uh, if you want to exit, uh, convert your existing application to app, and that is also you can do that. And uh, app and also definitely helps you to automate it. Any any questions, sir? Is when the integration part there should be some questions. Sir, so, so APN alone doesn't uh, completely uh, like develop an application like end to end. You're saying, or like I mean, no, no, APN is, is quite uh, mm -hmm. APN is quite capable of creating end to end application. So in case, mm -hmm. like for example, uh, if you are using uh, your existing applications and and your data is residing in your uh, database, right? You have Oracle database of your companies, right? So if you if suppose APN is not supporting the third party. What you have to do, mm -hmm. you have to bring all your data from your Oracle to the, the database where Appian supports, right? But this, that's not oh. the case. Appian is capable of integrating with your database and bring your information from there and process your data within the Appian and then write back to the your Oracle database, right? So you don't have to move, change your database. Whatever you are using, you can continue using that database and then you know you can process the data within the Appian. Okay, but Appian also has its own database that's called uh, MariaDB. Uh, you know. Uh, okay, one more thing that you know I uh, uh, I didn't uh, mention that Appian works in two. Uh, it has two methods. One is the on cloud and the on premise. Okay, you can also s install Appian on your premise, or you can also use the cloud version. So mostly people are using the cloud versions. Okay.
Okay, so the functionality is still the same, is it? Yes, functionality is still the same. There are few difference, like, uh, um, for example, if you want to use any plugins which are not installed on the system, I mean, it's not available. If that's available to the app market, so it's very easy on version that you know you just go and then you say uh, search for this plugin and install on your cloud version. That's very easy. Now, if you talk about the on-premise versions, you have to take the jar file and you have to keep that jar file to your local machine and then you have to restart your server. So why people are using on-premise? If that's difficult, that's how it's difficult to create a uh, plugin and then, right? So because the, uh, the on-premise version is more and more secure, right? So that's the thing. But App in Cloud is also secured. It's very, you know, I mean, App is not like such a small company that anyone can go and have. You know, like that system, but few things are there. And in many companies, who is like, uh, for example, if you talk about um, uh, bigger companies in US, the banking systems, they are very uh, concerned about their security, so they use uh, on cloud versions, uh, sorry, on premise versions. But now recently, uh, I have seen that many uh, banking companies are also started using the cloud versions. One more restriction is there, like suppose. If you have peoples in Java, and so there are such requirements that comes into your system, which is your uh, Appian is not capable of do that. So what you do, you will create a plugin for yourself, right? For example, um, you wanted to read a PDF file and then convert to the text file, right? That's the requirement by the business. And you think that there is no plugin available to the market for Appian. So what you will do, you will create your own plugin by using Java. Okay, you create a jar file and then that jar file you have to install to your system. So that particular plugin will only be available to your premise person. No one else can use that. Now, if in future you want to move from your own premise to on cloud, you need to get that approval first that you know the plugin that you are using is secure enough that you know it can be pushed to the cloud version. Because if you push to the cloud version, the plugin has to be also uh, move to the cloud version so you know and if it's moved to the cloud version it will also be available to the other users and if other users are trying to use that it should be more secure right so that's some restrictions are there for on cloud and and on premise versions. okay yeah thanks okay Recently, Appian has also introduced the AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and creating the bots where you know uh, you can automate. I mean, uh, you know, define your workflow with some bots combinations as well. So there will be some bots which are running in the behind. It's very recently launched, uh, so it is still enhancing. But they have started with some like you know they can create a bots and then they can, uh, you know, bots will perform some tasks. It's it's a robotic process RPA. So Appian has its own RPA now uh so you don't have to use the third party rpas like blue prism or uh, yeah, AI's tools for, for the purpose if you have such requirements you can you, everything you will find within the app yeah. all right as i give you example of the creating a tea right so in in that example you must have realized that you know the milk could can be into the fridge the sugar can be into the self you know some drawer the pen can be at some other places right so what you are doing is you are bringing all those in function at one place right to your stove and then you are making a tea same way appian also is capable of bringing the information from three different places or four different places and collect all those information create one collectible information process the data and then once the data has been processed and it has been updated you can again uh, you know, uh, go and write this data to the all different databases from where it has come, right? So, which is very easy in Appian, bringing all those information and then process the information and bring uh, send it back to the desired places. So, uh, Appian has a concept called records, and Appian records such a powerful tool which can be, uh, you know, uh, handle the entire applications in a process. So, for example, let's take if you are creating an app in uh, employee onboarding systems, you, you might have some employee table. So employee table, you want to keep this information in some other table. 
some other database employee salary information if you want to keep some other database employee uh, kyc you want to put, uh, keep in some other database there are three different database where you are keeping all those in employee information there should be one thing is common definitely employee id should be common in all three databases otherwise how you will relate that which kyc belongs to which employee now if you want to create a record out of three database you can do that and then you bring all those information and then collectively you can have employee name details kyc details and then salary details at one place process the data and then once you submit it also go back to their source position from where they have come from so that also very easy in appian to perform all right any question okay so you can see this is one of the interface design that dashboard process how you know uh, you can have reporting you can have charts to display the information you can have user icons lists you can divide your screen into the multiple sections initially it was very difficult right because initial days you can only divide your screen into two columns but now it has given that you can design the screen in multiple columns so that's how appian interface is enhancing day by day this is the one of the interface example for reporting where you can use charts uh, here we have a uh, line chart and then uh, you can also have pie chart bar chart uh, you know according to the requirements you want to display okay as i said that you know your your workflow can be combination of uh, your regular processes the smart services yes what is the smart services basically the smart services are the functions or the tools are available for the process modeling where you can perform like for example as i mentioned if you want to write a data to the database we have a smart service for that write to data store entity smart service so what happens is that once you when you uh, write your data you give you configuration like which entity you want to write the data and what data you want to write you just have to use this smart service write these two configurations there and your when the process will get executed it will write the data to your database similar way you can also include any bots if you have any bots designed in the system if, if you have rpa knowledge you can also design a bots and then you know uh, you can also make a combination of your bots and ai into your process so that's how appian is enhancing day by day itself to create an end to end applications without helping of any third party tools so this is the process model example uh, you can see in your right hand side that the uh, nodes are there these all are we call nodes these are you can see these are the gateways to decide which workload has to take it says that is circuit is if yes then it will take this path if no then it will take this path if user has click on cancel which path it has to take if you have click on submit which, which path it has to take so all those things you can design your process model so this is one of the example of the process model you can also integrate with the some third party very easily in the process model now suppose a uh, user has uploaded some document right from the screen and that document has to go to the docusign for the e signature so what we can do in the interface we can take an input of that document and in the process in the back end we can send that document to the docusign uh, by using the docusign uh, so service we have we need to create a service where we can pass this document to the docusign and then from there when it will get verified or signed we can get it back so all those things it can be done into the process okay any any questions i'll take that as no yeah i mean you can see uh, these are the um, uh, process modeling interface here on the right hand side and uh, left hand side you can see right uh, this is the code uh, how the present code works but this is how the appian modeling works you know so simply they are they have converted this appian uh, regular coding standard to the appian process modeling where you know everything will be designed in such a way that that you can easily configure instead of writing all these codes
what are the components we will be creating yeah definitely we will be creating some interfaces process modeling uh, rules integration objects equation rules constants you know all those things some reporting graph and all we will be creating this here is the list of the companies uh, it's very few but you can see that it has uh, bigger companies who are like you no know, right now using this appian we have johnson and johnson sanofi pfizer so you see this 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 list right in the pharmaceutical community you can see that this list is basically you know developed during the covid so in covid many companies have adopted appian as their primary tool okay all right so i'll be quickly uh, going for the product demo how the appian works um, and before that um, let me explain you that what's the appian architecture and then we can see one of the example of applications how and we'll see that application that we have built during some different training sessions so you can relate it i'm not going to see show you some you know, higher uh, uh, you know application was built by appian because that will be too much too you know, high concept so we'll be seeing that what kind of application we will we will be building during our training sessions okay so as the any other languages appian is also divided into three uh, layouts interface services and data so interface is like the front end where users interact okay so we can uh, see the tempo and sites and embedded and designer and administration console okay let me give you a product demo you now and then you, then you will be able to relate this information with this okay I hope you can see my screen. Yes, no? Yeah, the screen is visible. Yes. Yeah, thank you. All right, so this is the Appian screen. Uh, we will be using this cloud version to understand how Appian works. Uh, I'll give some details. So this is the Appian screens where, you know, uh, we will be developing everything so appian has many screens when we talk about this first screen that appian users will see the basic users when we talk about the basic users it's like they are the users who will be using the applications when i say that system administrator it means the system administrator or the developers the person who will be creating the application okay so this ui is for both system administrator developers or the basic users so basic user will have this access of this ui where they can see this is called tempo if you see the url in the url this is these are the page uh, uh, base url and then we have different shoots one second guys sorry okay so this is the base url and then we have different shoots so the first shoot is called tempo in tempo we can see there are five tabs news tasks records reports and actions so what's the news like suppose if any news for any application they wanted to uh, you know display any news about that uh, that customer has onboarded successfully and all kind of stuff so those things can be done here will go not in sequence let me explain you then we have actions uh, in actions you can initiate any process like for example you want to apply a leave you can select you know based on the application so here on the left hand side you will be see that it's a list of the uh, applications so one app in environment it's not right it can have only one application you can create n number of applications in your environment okay so these are the list of applications for example as a system admin i can see all those applications but as a basic users if you are only part of certain applications you cannot see all of them you will be able to see only few applications you belong to for example let's say you have the access of lead management systems you will be able to see only these two 
uh, actions here. So once you click on apply leave, it will open an interface for you where you can take an action and you can apply a leave. Like suppose you want to apply it for yourself or if you want to apply it for someone on behalf of someone, you can process your actions from here. Once you process any actions, right, your leave request will get submitted and then it will go for an approval. So your manager, when your manager will log in, they can go to the task tab and under the task tab, they can see, you know, uh, their task assigned to them. Or if you if you are a manager, you log in, you will see the, the task assigned to you. Okay, so once you click on any task, you will be able to see that, okay, there are certain tasks I have, I need to accept it and then you have to perform the task. So news is for displaying the information about anything if you want to publish action is to create to, to trigger a new action task if any task is assigned to you you need to perform those tasks records that we talk about the records we can see the employee records like for example if you want to see the list of the employees that we have into the system we can we can see it here and then we can you know uh, work on that applications we can take an action on those employee records and all and then we have reports now if you want to build any report out of your application like for example um, okay no data is here I think. yeah if you want to create an application of like you know how many requests was created in a day day wise how many requests so you can see that you know on this particular day what number of requests was there so you can also create a report based out of the charts okay so that's how your uh, admin reports work so this is basically about the uh this shoot tempo is for the basic users okay now we have our next shoot which come for the developers so right click on this grid icon and if you go to the pen designer you will be able to see that this is the design environment where user can go and a developer can go and start developing for the application so all those actions you were seeing on your accent tab right all those actions these are for different applications and here you can see all those different applications has been created so if you want to create a new application you can create a new application put them some naming and all right you can proceed from here so this is the design environment which will be used to develop your application okay third is the cloud database the cloud database is basically is for uh, you know uh, in house database that i can provide to you it's a it's a uh, maria db in the in the server mysql you can see that it's a bit similar to a mysql but in the backend it is using maria db and then uh, we have one more shoot called app in console admin console and this admin console is for the system administrator user not the only the developers if you have only development uh privilege you cannot access this page so if you are system admin you can see this page a system administrator will be used to set the you know uh, branding of your page how your application will look like throughout your entire application and then uh you can create a users you can uh, give the permissions you can do web api authentications you can uh check health check you can perform the health check of your application you know all those things you can perform data sources if you want to add as one of the example i mentioned right if you want to add your your own data source here like uh, oracle or my uh, sql server so you can create your data source here you just have to provide which database you are using let's example you are using an oracle you select oracle and then you need to provide your connection string and then the username and password so appian will be now able to uh you know um, uh, connect with the database to your uh, with, with that pin. okay all right now um this is about the admin console let's see quickly one example of appian uh, application so for example let's say uh, leave management system i want to apply a leave so i'll say that i want to apply leave on behalf of someone I'll search for an employee. Let's say I don't remember the name, so I just search for the employee with the first name. I select for an employee, and then we hit next. We can say what's the start date. I want to have a date, let's say 11th of September. The number of days it is auto calculated. What kind of leave I want to have? I'll let's say only if you have any document or you can upload it. So if you have a document, you can upload it. If not, then you can click on next. If this is a confirmation page saying that you know these are the details that you have filled up and you can finally submit the leave request 
once you submit the leave request it will give you a confirmation page that the leave request has been submitted successfully your request number is this 19 okay now if i click on okay go to the task see our task has been created for me and you know uh we can open this accept this thing you can see okay this is the leave details these are the request progress uh, you know these are the details of uh user has added and it, based on your comment you can either approve or reject it let's say i say approve let's say put the comment i say approve so this is very uh you know a basic application we will be create, uh, we have created for the last training sessions and for us also we will be creating a very basic application so we can understand how the workflows are designed how the things are working in the back end we will see all those things uh there are many other applications as well that has created by appian they, they say for example uh you know uh, you see the acme automobiles so if you can add a vehicle here put all those details add the vehicle to your acme mobile system see if you go to the records you will be able to see that there are many records they might have created so it's a vehicles or right now there's no vehicle. so this is appian i mean do you have any questions for this appian uh, shoots and then appian application any questions guys okay i'll take that as no let me now share back my presentation okay so now you might be able to understand really the things interfaces we have tempo and sites uh tempo we have seen that right we'll see the sites and you know when we start developing and all so we have embedded interface we have designers which is for the developer and then we have also seen that i console so these are the front end now if you talk about the uh backend, so that's the services how the model has been designed which server we are using to capture the data where we are keeping the files the file that we are uploading where are the rules are being saved that we have created where the models are being saved that we have created so all those things are gone in the back server so i can use the apache servers also to keep all those information and then finally it comes to the database so database is like which database we are using uh, where we are keeping this data uh, in which file server we are up, uh, capturing the files you know? so all those things we come into the data part yeah i mean yeah any question and answer guys i mean if you have questions please do us so actually uh, i used to see some of the companies uh, using appian uh, they posted linkedin saying that uh, they are into hyper automation uh, but i don't know what exactly they mean if you have an idea the hyper automation right the automation basically um suppose uh, your banks uh, there is a master data okay uh, there is a master data that needs to be replaced every day right so currently the process is that you know they have to get that in master data information from one table to different table or from one database to different service so right now the process is that uh, who, they, who they are not using appian so what they do they first generate this excel file of the data or this csv file of the data from one database and keep it some some shared location and from that shared option people manually have to pick that file execute that file and refresh the data to your second database to refresh your data right now what appian can do once the file has been shared at a particular location appian can by itself you know if you have designed a process in a such a way that you know at at like let's say three three o'clock in the morning please uh, you know run this process and pick the file from that particular location and refresh the data so it's not like user have to wake up at three o'clock the appian process will run at the three o'clock and then bring the information from there and process the data and then update the database okay so that's called the uh you know um, automated batch processes that appian can perform now other things is that you know if you have the ai the artificial intelligence that appian has introduced 
where if you want to read any email and bring some information out of it, read that email, bring that information, and then process that information into the backend. So Appian is capable of doing all those things. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, questions. I mean, I'm done with my presentation, so there should be some questions from you and right. Oh, yeah, hi. Uh, can we get any site to design these applications? Um, yes, actually, basically, uh, we will be creating your, you know, your own credentials um, uh, in Appian Community. Okay, in Appian Community, we will be creating. We'll try to do that, but the problem is that you know this Appian Community has uh, uh, received a lot of requests recently. This, so they have, I mean, you know, uh, dealing to provide the sites for you guys. But what I'll do, uh, I'll. I'll share my uh, my site status with you guys where you can you know uh, do the practice. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. Yes, that's important. Do the practice. Okay. Yes, guys. Okay, so few information from my end. Then, uh, you know, uh, what we will be doing is that every day we will be having a one hour of session, right? Um, in one hour of session, we will be creating an application, and then we will be sharing you the uh, recordings as a view access. Okay, um, recordings will be shared. What is what I will require from uh, from you guys, right? I mean, you know, uh, as a train, if you're going to continue, so daily join, join, you know, uh, daily attend the session, which is very important because uh, if you miss any class, right? You know, it's very difficult. It's a human nature. You know, you, you will you will be having the recordings, but some days it's fine. But you know, uh, if you keep doing like every day, like you're not attending the session, you know, then it will be very difficult to. Uh, you know, make you understand where you have left off. So please attend the session daily and and practice. Definitely, the practice is more important. So whatever we are doing it in a daily basis in, during the during the classes, right? You can also try the same approach or same application, or if you want to have some different thing in your mind, you can do that as well. Okay. So practicing is also a very important factor for this same session. The session will go approx. Uh, 45 days okay and uh, one day or uh, one hour per day okay and it will be monday to friday if if like if uh, i got some work or something urgent that you know will not be able to, i'll be let you know well in advance okay um you can ask your doubts in we have a whatsapp we will be creating a whatsapp group Okay, uh, we'll be creating a WhatsApp group. So, uh, where you can, uh, you know, ask your question and doubt in the question, okay, in the group. Anything else you want to know? What kind of application we are planning to do? Um, what approach we will take? We'll go topic wise or we'll go application development wise. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, by the end of this course, like uh, we'll be able to understand the uh, complex applications as well. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So, end of the course, what you will be able to perform and what we will be covering it. End of the course, you will be able to design. You should be able to design your application on your own. Okay. 
you should be able to design app app from your own you will be able to clear uh, at least level one certification so in appian we have three level of certification level one level two and level three basically uh, level one is called associate okay level is the associate developer and level two is called uh, senior developer and level 3 is called lead developer okay all the certification uh, it is like 200 per dollar charges okay now if your company uh, is a partner of appian like if you are already working with such a company that which is a partner of appian you will get a 50% of discount okay so yes uh, uh, this discount you will get it if only if you are registered with your company email address not your personal email address all right so once you complete this session you will be able to create your applications you should be clear able to create your uh, clear your level one certification and uh, um you can also mention like you, you have at least uh, two years of experience uh, you know based on this trend so for example if you have all together 10 years of experience in some other language it's a java or python and you want to move to the appian you can go with like say i, I have 10 eight years of experience in java and then two years i'm, I'm working on learning the appian okay? in such a way you can mention so after this training you will be working as a developer okay um, So don't mention that you know I have five years of experience in Appian or ten years of experience in Appian. Don't go with that because based on the training, you should you will be capable of answering you know uh, two years of experience of person. Okay. Any questions? When is the next class ready? Like tomorrow or tomorrow? Yeah, we can start with tomorrow. Tomorrow on what same time? 730. Oh, tomorrow evening from Monday or um yeah, obviously Monday. <laughs> it's just Friday and Saturday. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, right? So 730. Monday. It's a fourth, right? Yeah. Few more details about me. I, this is this will be going to be my fifteenth batch with uh, uh, with uh, training. So yeah. Is any any other questions like if you wanted to know like how we will be working what kind, uh, what kind of applications and uh, what's the approach let me tell you that we will be going through see there are two ways of uh, training we go either with the topic wise right the topic wise you know um, like I'll select a topic and we'll talk about that right I I don't prefer this one um, because it is not able to you will be not able to relate which object is required at what time so what i prefer to do is i create application from the scratch no so in this what happens you know you will be able to relate uh, what object is required at what time okay So what happens, you know, uh, we might be learning this process modeling concept in, in the during the process, and then uh, we start the recording and record. We start the record uh, classes and record also. We we may learn the uh, uh, process modeling, right? So 
you will get chance multiple times to know about the process modeling know about interfaces okay so that's how we can we will proceed for this application uh with application from scratch so in the first day of classes we'll decide which application we want to proceed with and then you know uh, we can go according to that All right okay from what you will receive from the hatcher training um at the end of the session you will be receiving some uh, interview questions okay and we will also sharing you some uh, you know uh, presentation skill of your resume uh um, we will be supporting you with the whatsapp group okay and uh what else yeah you will be getting a uh, recordings for each session as a view access i'll be sharing with the you know um practice environment um this will be limited uh, you know uh, limited to the developer access you don't need the uh, you know app in dynamic access because uh, lots of things has happened in the past uh, and then uh, you know once the training is completed um, uh, i can extend till 10 days of training after that we have to remove the access because lots of users are there now you know we are using this environment so if many people will be there then you know even my uh, can be uh, get go down and then if that's go down the training will be very difficult so yeah so i'll be sharing my uh, access to you guys till the training happens and that, and i can extend that 10 days so i'll just ask in the whatsapp group if anyone is required or not if you say yes then i can extend to the 10 days and sometimes i also have extended uh, one month but that depends okay and also um some you will have some you know um, interview practice session okay so this support on the question like suppose if you have any question you would post post on the whatsapp group uh, maybe i will not be able to respond at the same time but whenever i'll get time i'll i'll respond to you guys on that whatsapp group if it is required to get up in a call i'll call you and then we can discuss on that part okay any more questions all right then let's have a quick uh, uh it's, i know it's already late uh um, so how many of you are, are like you know, uh, uh, belongs to it and, and how many of them are non it so we say how about you uh, i am from it background okay all right thanks and srinivas okay uh shadow it is not clear okay and nagashar kumar i'm not sure you are speaking i cannot hear you All right you can just message me okay great uh thanks edu and chef alam kaushik uh, kaush you you mentioned that you from it as well hi arsha hi hi this is ravi mm. when i was uh, attending some different the hatch training yeah so yeah. you you also from the it background right yeah okay thank you sony 
Yes, hi Ravi. Yeah, I'm also from IT Bad. Okay, great. And Koshi? I am from IT Bad. Okay, thank you. And Nikhil? Uh, I'm from non IT Ravi. Okay. Recently I have started, so I have a basic knowledge on SQL. Uh -huh. Okay. No worries. Okay, fine. I mean, we have maximum IT background, but that's fine. And it will no need to worry. Hey, don't be hesitate. Like, you know, everyone is from IT, then how do we proceed and all right? So no need to worry about that. I mean, it's not that tough to learn. Uh, you will be able to catch up the things quickly. Okay. All right, guys, if there are any questions, do let me know. Uh, we are good to wrap up the call. No? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for attending the session. And uh, I will be seeing you on Monday at the same time. Anyone has any issues with the timing? Do let me know. Okay. Sure. Um, thanks. Thanks, all. It was nice talking to you all, guys. Um, have a nice weekend. Bye bye.